Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Business. In the last episode, uh, I challenge you to arrange in order of priority the five critical factors that determine the success of any business. highlighted them to be uh, the first one we said funding and uh, we talked about timing we talked about the people who execute the idea and we asked ourselves is it the idea itself is the idea everything or is it the strategy or the business model that you have that determines your success so with these five critical factors you are supposed to arrange them in order of priority and I got very many answers uh, but we are going to talk about that as we go and I promised that I'll give you my personal view of what I think among those five critical factors which one is the most important and to illustrate this point I'm going to use a business that we are all aware of and that is Uber Uber has had a mix of these five factors uh, in the story of Uber we will look at it and ask ourselves is it the idea that made the business so amazing is it the funding that they got from Google and from Amazon? Or is it really the people who drove the whole idea? Or is it its strategy or its business model? And we will also ask ourselves, is it its timing that made it very great? So please stay tuned as we learn about Uber. Have you ever had a great idea or a great company and you believed in it? and it failed, it never worked. And you looked at Uber and asked yourself, how can I, an idea be so great and build such a great company? Before it went public recently, Uber was valued at $68 billion. It was operating in 600 cities in 78 countries and making over 12 million trips a day. But Uber has had a twist of the five factors that we are looking at. There's the idea, there's the funding that they got from Google and Amazon and many other investors and uh, even them going public was a funding strategy and there's the strategy that they have and the business model that they have and there's the people who, who drive the idea, the, the, the one who drive the strategy, the team and there's the timing of Uber when it started. Uber was started in 2008 by Travis Kalanick and Garrett Camp. Uh, these two young men came together and started what we now call a great company, Uber. But I want to take you back to how they started. It was just after the American Depression, Great Depression, and one, one out of four Americans were jobless. 25% of Americans were jobless. And so there was no YouTube at that time, and uh, there was no Facebook that you can spend your free time on, and or, or you can try to do something to earn something, to earn some money. So most Americans uh, needed a way to earn an extra income, and people started driving taxis. So there were lots and lots of taxis. And because there was a depression and uh, many people were jobless, uh, many people could not afford taxis and taxis was a big business at that time. So during 2008, uh, companies started coming up with new ways of making taxi services more efficient, more affordable, and more readily available. It was so difficult at that time trying to grab a taxi and it was a bit frustrating at that time because if you have to take a taxi, then you have to walk to where it is and you have to go through the hassle of asking, are you available, do you have a customer? Are you, can you take me to this place? There was no standardized uh, fare uh, or, or pricing. And the system was not in place aside from the taxi associations and a few regulations that came by. This created an opportunity for companies like Cabulas that existed then. And this was an internet page that allowed you to request for, for, for taxi services and the subscribers uh, will get your location and come to you. 
and by this time uh, camp and travis uh, were sharing ideas and just frustration on taxi services when they met in paris in 2008 and camp shared with travis about them creating uber cabs and that time that time they are calling it uber cabs and travis was really not keen of, of, of the idea because he was working on something much similar and uh, he was working with uh, he was working on Airbnb. Uh, at that time, internet penetration had started to gain traction, but Travis was not really keen of the idea until an incident happened where one one time they were together with uh, Travis, Camp and Travis in, in one cab, and the driver uh, started to yell at them, and uh, he was very disrespectful uh, to a point where Travis decided to walk out of the taxi. And uh, that is when he got the drive to, 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 to actually work on that idea. And at first they called it Uber Cabs. And it allowed the users to actually text the address to the app. And when you text the address to the app, uh, the drivers will actually get your location and then they come to you. But they mainly focused on luxury cars. They started Uber Cabs through luxury cars and campus of the idea that Uber should own cars, luxury cars, and uh, at one point he went ahead to even call Travis and tell him, look, I have even acquired the papers, I have acquired a whole parking lot and a fleet of Mercedes Benz. And Travis was against the idea of owning the cars and owning the drivers, something I, uh, which I think helped Uber a lot uh, to even win the cases because they never owned the cars, they didn't own the drivers, they didn't have to worry about labor laws, to worry about maintenance, to worry about fuel, medical cover to the drivers. And so camp later on uh, accepted and they started in 2009. Uh, but it was just an app that you have to SMS the app and then the driver gets the coordinates and they come to you. So they first started in New York and pitched it in the luxury vehicles and that is how uh, Uber kicked off the ground. After purchasing the domain uh, ubercabs.com and GPS tracking was gaining traction, was, going, was gaining traction, they introduced something, they will make the Uber that you know now, they introduced GPRS tracking where you no longer have to send an SMS to the app but when you request you will actually see the car coming to you and that enabled them to receive a 1.2 million dollar funding capital from our first round capital and Travis did something again that really helped Uber he went and tweeted and saying we are looking for a very entrepreneurial product managers and Ryan Graves responded and that is how he became the CEO of Uber. And just after that, San Francisco Municipal Capital sued them for using the name uh, Uber uh, Cubs. And so they had to drop the word uh, Cubs from, uh, and they, they, they became Uber. And they went ahead and bought the domain Uber.com from Universal Music. And the CEO really helped to build together Uber and the strategy that they had in pricing, where there's low demand. The prices increase just like hotels and restaurants uh, in fact after so many lawsuits they say this is the strategy that hotels and restaurants use and uh, they used per mile rate they use the distance they add the toll fees they also added what we call surge in their strategy of pricing and also pricing depending on the location uh, for example if you order uber from an expensive hotel and uh, someone else orders uber uh, in, in, in a slum, yeah, those two people may walk the same distance but pay differently. And those are some of the pricing strategies that they used. And uh, in 2011, they started expanding from city after city, city after city each, each month. And they obtained a $32 million funding from uh, Amazon and, uh, and Goldman. And after two years, they moved to other countries and uh, in 2013 they moved to Africa and India and uh, then Google pumped 258 million dollars in terms of funding to the company and they faced a lot of 
lawsuits. Uh, they had disputes with governments. In some countries, they were even shut down. But they went ahead to grow, uh, launching Uber Air. Uh, they launched a freight system of transporting cargo. They went to launch Uber Pool, where if you're going to one direction, then you can select Uber uh, with different, from different places going towards one destination and, and, and be able to use the same car and cut costs. They launched uh, Uber Rush. Uh, this was uh, messengers, uh, delivery services of Uber. They launched Uber Fresh. Uh, they launched uh, Uber X, Uber Select. They went to even launch Uber Eats for delivery of foods. So they went from growth to growth up to where they, they are now. They reached to a point where they decided to go public. And so many things, uh, Uber has been able to grow uh, to where it is right now. And many people argue and say, but it's not profitable. Uh, Uber has not yet been profitable. Uh, it has been registering enormous losses even after going public. But in another episode, we'll be able to cover and see what really uh, is making Uber making, uh, make the losses that is, it's making. But I have reasons to believe that the losses are due to some loopholes in its uh, business model. And because of its expansion and too much money going into research and development, then it's hard for us to see the, profitable, the, the, the profitability we want to see in Uber. But there is no doubt that Uber is a great business. And with that story, we can be able to see a mix of business model. We can see a mix of funding. We can see a mix of the team uh, that, that came into Uber, the idea itself. And we can see something to do with its strategy. So with this story of Uber, it's a great example for us to be able to go to the next episode where we now break down the five factors that can make your business uh, become successful. If you did not get an opportunity to listen to the previous episode where we challenged you to tell us the most important factor in making a business uh, successful, then this is an opportunity for you. Go to the comment section. Tell me what is that critical factor that has made Uber successful among the five factors that we'll be looking at in the next episode. And uh, do you think it is the timing of Uber when it came? Do you think it is the money that uh, was pumped in? Uh, do you think it is the team? Or do you think the Uber idea itself is everything? Or is it its strategy or the business model? Please let me know what you think. See you next time.